Unmute me. Hello, everyone. Oh, Annie, volume. It's down. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second. Have you put your headphones in your phone? Unmute me. Hello, everyone. Uh, volume. How's that? Yeah. It's okay, okay. So you're going to be muted. Uh, so welcome to the second episode of Pop-Up Painting Live. Um, thank you for those of you who joined us the other day. Um, and thank you for joining us tonight. Um, you may have a small echo at the beginning, but that will go because I'm going to be muting myself. But I just wanted to kick off the event. Thank you for joining us. Um, some of you can hear and some can't. So that's a bit confusing. I can't see any reason why. Um, so hopefully sound will kick in if you can't hear us already. Um, so as I said, thank you for joining us. Um, we are Pop-Up Painting, and what we usually do is uh, bring our out of the classroom, out of the gallery, into bars and restaurants. With Pop-Up Painting Live, we're working with what we've got, and we are trying to bring you art straight into your home. Um, and what we're usually about, or what we're still about, and hope we're about tonight, is a glass of wine in one hand and a paintbrush in the other. So this is just for fun. Annie over here is a qualified and practicing artist and she's gonna be taking you step by step through um, Hokusai's Great Wave. Um, she's gonna be breaking it down for you. Um, and my role tonight is to help with any questions you might have, help Annie respond to comments and things like that. So if you're watching on Instagram, I will disappear from your screen very shortly, but still be in the comments. Um, and on YouTube, um, I'll be uh, helping Annie uh, with comments and questions as well. Um, so we have introduced um, our um, pop-up painting art kits, um, which you can find at popuppainting.com slash live. You can get your own kits for future events. They're really good. Uh, we've partnered up with some uh, partner suppliers. And also, if you are watching, um, if you go either to popuppainting.com slash live, or go to the description on our YouTube, you can find a link to our Spotify playlist for this specific painting. So what we usually do, we do events in bars and restaurants, they're paint parties, and it's themed with music and whatever else we can theme. So as you've got Hokusai tonight, uh, we have got a summer playlist. So if you've got Spotify, if you've got that link handy, as I said, it's in the description on YouTube or on popuppainting.com slash live, pop the playlist on, immerse yourself properly, um, and have a really lovely evening. We really enjoyed seeing everyone's results after Saturday's session. Um, really, really appreciated that. Really liked everyone's paintings. So if you do want to share, um, just send, um, put them on your story on Instagram and our hashtag is pop up painting live and we're at pop up painting. So I don't think there's much more I need to say now. I'm gonna be in the comments. If you've got any questions or anything else, just give us a wave. Um, and I'll hand over to Annie. I suppose one last thing to, for me to say before I, I shh myself. Um, Annie is gonna be taking you step by step with acrylics, but you can use whatever else you've got lying around the house. If you've got pens or biros or pencils, feel free to use them. Let us know in the comments what you're working with and we'll do our best to try and incorporate it. So I can see that Gemma on YouTube has talked about water brush pens. So Annie, I suppose, throughout the evening, can you try and talk about water brush pens and we'll see what we can uh, incorporate. Um, if there is any echo or anything like that, it shouldn't be coming from us anymore, but we may have some slow internet points. So we'll try to repeat ourselves and work as best we can. Um, but other than that, that's enough from me. So I'm gonna hand over to Annie now and remove myself from the big screen on YouTube. So have a lovely evening, everyone. And over to you, Annie. Okay, would you like me to beat you out of Instagram? Oh, you've done it. Okay, great. <laughs> right, hello people, hello Instagrammers. Um, welcome to my home. Um, come in, no need to take off your shoes. <laughs> so, first thing is, if you haven't already, is to get your paint set out. So I've set out a red, a blue, a yellow and a white for the Hawker's Eye great way of painting so we have this here i printed it out we have printed yours out we've still got the event live on our website which you can use as a reference image um so um have that open separate window maybe if you're watching on youtube so you can quickly refer to it if you're using your phone then that's your you're sorted you've got multiple devices um 
So but don't worry about that because I will get you through step by step anyway if you haven't got the image. Um, in saying that, you can do whatever you want. Um, you're not limited. You're free to do what you like. If you don't like what I'm saying, you're free to change it up, change the colours, or just completely do whatever you want to do. Maybe you just put this on for background noise. That's absolutely fine. Main thing is, is that this is not a class, this is not a tutorial, this is a step by step bit of fun process for you So just have a, um, a laugh and oh, yeah, the most important ingredient is the wine, so I've got mine sorted there, ready. Um, and let's get started. So I've got, other than the wine, I've also got three brushes, so I've got a big one, a medium one, and a small one. And I've also got another small one just in case because the small brushes can be a little bit fiddly. Uh, I've also got some water, any cup of water that you don't mind getting dirty, you don't need an actual paint pot is fine. Um, and also I've got some kitchen towels just to dab my paintbrush in um, if I want to, you know, get some excess paint off. I've also got some tissue on handy, so um, the textures of each are, you know, have multiples of these in case you mistake, you can wipe it off as well. Um, this is also in case I sneeze, so that's always handy to have by. Um, what else? Oh yes, in the canvas. Some of you might be using felt tips, that's absolutely fine. Um, if you're using like these sort of barrel ones, these are, you can put these you can put this on the surface and use some water over it, they'll actually bleed. The watercolour pens, um, the brushes, um, I would go slowly with them and then maybe have like a separate pot as well and a paint brush, maybe a dry brush um, if you've got one so that you can bleed the colours out as well. Um, I'm not professional in the watercolour pens but I know that watercolour is really good with the bleeding the paint out and giving a great sort of texture. So you might want to uh, experiment with the, the background here. Um, also, I saw someone on Instagram using poster paint. That's, that's also great. That's just still a good material to use to do this. So let's get started. I'm firstly going to mix up the background colour here. So I'm going to mix up a very light look. And what for that colour, I'm going to use my meat brush and I'm going to pick up the white paint and then bring in the red. And maybe just grab a bit more white into that mixture as well, just to give it a bright up because it's quite bright and light in the background. And then I'm going to really gradually bring in the blue paint just to give it a little bit more of a lilac -y shade. So I've got a fair amount there. I know roughly the quantities I made to get that. And I'm using my medium brush. So what I'm going to do is place the outline really roughly of the wave and mount each of those. So, if you're on Instagram, I'm using the selfie mode camera. So this is my left, where I'm pointing to. If that might be on your right, um, I'm not really sure if it flips it. Um, so this is my left, and I'm starting on the left of my canvas. Um, it doesn't really matter. You could just have mirrored waves, that's fine. But anyway, let's get going. I am going to pinpoint the middle point of my canvas. And I'm just going to go about roughly an inch above that. And I'm going to mark, I'm still using my medium brush and I'm going to do a swoop line over. And then I'm going to find the middle point of that bend at the top. And then I'm going to swoop all the way down and over again. This is just a really rough guideline. There's no final marks at this stage. If you don't like any of the lines that you put down at this point, don't freak out. Doesn't matter. So, just to explain, I did the wave and then I did this swoopy line. The wave and the swoopy line. Okay. Now, I'm going to continue with some swoopy lines because I want to put Mount Fuji in really roughly 
and then I'm going to wash my brush. Okay, how are we all doing? Oh, the pens and highlighters, that's good. Oh, how's Instagram? Nice. Right, now next thing I'm gonna add in, there is a banana boat with a few little dudes just cruising the wave, you know, very calmly. So I'm gonna place that sort of banana bend boat thing in now just because the colours are not to blue yet, so I don't want to risk that going green. So I'm just going to pick the yellow up straight from my palette and I'm going to add that in just underneath here. And I'm using my small brush and it comes halfway over Mount Fuji. Okay. And all it is is like a bit, bit of a Cheshire smile. There we go. It doesn't have to be neat at this stage. We can like fix it all up a little bit after. Are we getting this? Everyone's okay? Now, I say we get the big brush. And we get that colour that we initially made up. Maybe mix it a little bit more if you need a bit more. And we're just going to swoop on behind our wave to fill in that background scarf. Okay, just, so just fill all that in. If you want to make a different colour sky, that's absolutely fine. It doesn't have to be this colour. But just to recap, this colour was I picked up the white first. Then I bring in some red. It's gone pink. And I want to bring in the dark blue very gradually. So I am using a very light shade of purple. And I'm just washing that all the way to the background. Um, if you are using watercolor to get a sort of very light wash, you probably want to loosen the paint up with a bit of water um, so it becomes a weaker wash than it would be directly painting it with the colour that you have picked. So, do we have any questions? Are we using highlighters or anything? Okay. Right. Now, when we get a certain amount done and you're happy with that, we want to pick the white paint up straight from our brush. And there is a section in the middle of the sky here, just for our wave dips and crashes that we want to, just to sort of blend out with the white paint. So that shape is very sort of weird and you know, there's no actual direction for me to say it's a, a triangle, it's a square, you know. So blend, blend that out as much as you can. It doesn't have to be a solid sort of block. Oh my god, my water pot anywhere. Um, they're quite sort of different lines so if you want that you can go for it and you can go for a bit more of a blended mode but to get those is just literally the white paint and if you're finding that it's not appearing the way that you want it just let your paint dry and come back over it later so don't lay a load of paint on it now, just to get that effect, if it's not working, it is the paint will need to be Okay, how many people have gone to the Spotify playlist and are listening to the summer soundtrack? Okay, 
let us know. We have the background done in this sky. So we marked out our wave and some few lines. We added Mount Fuji, we did the banana boat or the chest smile. And now we did the sky in the background and we blend the white there as well. I'm just gonna let that dry a little bit while we mix up. I'm gonna stick with my um, big brush and I'm mixing up a light blue, very light blue. If you are using um, any other material like crayons, I don't know, maybe you literally have nothing but you want to take part, but you've got multiple lipsticks, let us know. This could be a fun little creation to see um, how many people are having full pop up painting event with our playlist, drinking some wine, wine glass in one hand paintbrush in the other lot ways on Instagram hello any questions on YouTube how are we all doing need to know okay. oh, you made me jump can you just run through what you use to mix that really pale sky for us please yeah Okay, so I used my white paint, which I'll need to top up in a bit. And then I mix that with the red to get a nice pink shade. And then to control the level of purple that's gonna eventually go to, um, I just gradually picked up the dark blue. Um, and then I mixed all those three together. You, I, I only really needed like a very tiny lot of the dark blue to get that shade. You don't need a lot. And that was it, really. Is, that, is everyone okay? Is that point? Felt tips. We've got some felt tips from Emma on YouTube. That's fine, Emma. Get, get a bit of scrap paper and experiment. Experiment with um, mark making and then putting a bit of water over it. See if it bleeds or anything. You might be able to get some quite cool effects. Um, okay, so I'm going to paint in now. Let's have a look at this again most of this wave pattern but leaving some of this white space because it's not blue so I don't really want to paint the whole thing blue because it's you know no point because I can cut back with the, the white later on you know after we've all had our break and a refresh of white <laughs> there isn't really any break we're just joking in case you know this is a real pop-up Okay, so there we go. We've got the back wave covered. I need more paint on my palette. All rough. And the weather is going to get darker as well as time goes on. So I've got a little lamp that I will switch on as the powers be darkens. Okay. Yes. Got a question about beryl felt tips and what you can do to make them look more paint like. Beryl, I think I've got some. I don't know how or why I have these, but I've got some. Um, beryl, right. Let me use a color that you might be able to see. Um, I've got purple. Um, let me do this. So this is probably not, I, what, uh, paper will probably be a bit better than like watercolour paper or something that's a little bit thicker. Printer paper will bulk and bubble. It's perfectly usable, but if you're planning on framing this or gifting it, you probably would want a bit more of a better kind of paper. Anyway, I've put the, that on my canvas and I'm going to place some water over it and it's running. So you can, if you smudge over it quite hardly you can almost fade away that hard line but also the colour is bleeding upwards so that the solid line that you made becomes quite blurred so that's what you can do there with those um if you have water stubble pencils so basically watercolour pencils that's exactly the process um funnily enough i need to leave that one there so <laughs> and that becomes 
the second wave. Like, so we've got that big wave behind, which I've just blocked out. And now we've got the front wave here. So I'm going to leave that one there as a marker for myself. Um, and then I'm using this light blue again, just to fill in that entire area. I think I need to put more white on my palette. So top up as you need to go. Um, I think Aris has already mentioned we will leave this on YouTube so that if you miss a bit or you just fancy watching it and catching up another time, it's there for you. Right, I'm filling in the bulk of this at the bottom with a blue. It's a little bit darker than my previous one. That's just because I needed a bit more white and I've topped my palette up, but that's fine, it's okay. I'm not, I'm not finished yet, so I don't need to worry about all this. And there's a lot more dark to go over it. So we don't need to worry about this bit here because that's going white for the splash. Okay, are we getting some kind of sense of a wave? appearing on our own canvases or our paper that we're using. Oh, and let's not forget, Mount Fuji is also blue. So we can use any brush really. We've got that banana bolt. I'm sure there's a proper name for it if anyone would like to give us all the history lesson, that would be great. Okay. So you feel that in. I'm just gonna mark that out a bit more. Okay, right, how are we doing? Mine looks nothing like mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> mine looks nothing like mine. I actually did do this one. <laughs> um, okay, right. So we have, we're not, we're not gonna put the white down yet. So I'm going to, we've got, if you can see, we've got some dark blue and some light blue. So we've placed the light blue down already in a bit of a bulk. So now we're going to add some dark blue and we can mark out these sort of areas white as well as we add those dark blues. And the way we're gonna add the dark blue is in like little lines and strokes. So that I'm going to use the majority of this bit of the dark blue, my medium brush. And if you need some more dark blue, I suggest maybe use top up. Um, if you wanted to, you could mix. You've got the light blue and the dark blue. If you have a light blue and dark blue, you can mix those two blues together. Then it gives you a magic third blue. You don't need to do that. I just thought I'd mention it as a possibility. So we have a stripy line there. So this is where we're going to start to have the wave appear. And we also have, like, as I say, we've got that section there of that second wave that peaks up there and all this bit is white. So we're just marking that out and I'm using the side. So like the side of my brush to mark it. You can also use the small brush to mark this out as well if you prefer. And I'm going to sweep down, just touching my boat over there. Mount Fiji is also in dark blue. So I'm just gonna carefully paint that as well. But the top of it has a bit of snow. So I'm just gonna leave the top of that in light blue, as it is. I might need as much white paint to give it a little bit of snow covered tops. And then when we have that dip up there, we, then there's a dip down here in the front. So it's always a bit confusing in terms of its waves and odd um, shapes. There's no real sort of 
as I said earlier, with the clouds are defining sort of like triangle square, you know, that I can indicate to say to you, this is what it looks like. Um, but if you just um, look at your screens, whatever you're doing, and in, in this somehow, so the tips of these lines that I'm doing, especially this one, that will be covered in white. So I'm just giving, I'm just giving the indication now of that shape. And it will become more clear as, as we do it. So now we need to layer on the shape of the way. So you need to follow the contours of the angles of all of these. So you can get an impression that there's something moving along your canvas, nearly lost the canvas there. Um, and all we're doing that is just giving some nice curved lines. And what you'd want to do is go back and forth. If you do too much dark blue, just mix up some light blue again with your white, if you haven't got a light blue, just mix some white and light blue together and bring the light blue back in. Alternatively, if you wanted to, you could blend them together at the same time with the white paint. We just did that there. Um, and we don't need to go, like this marker line here is white. And I'll just demonstrate that by holding. So we've got this marker line here, which is this. So all of that, oh, did you mute me? <laughs> did we miss? Okay, I'll just continue. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, okay, right. So let's have a lovely time in some of these stripy lines. Filling in these lines. If you want to have a different weight or contour to your line, you can swap between brushes. I said medium one and a small one, and this is going to give you something. Oh, I might actually just use that for a little while. So we're sticking to these shapes, these lines, and then eventually we will go over the top of these with the white paint. So you need quite a lot of white paint. If you haven't got any white paint and you're using like felt tips um, or watercolor or anything, you might want to use the paper that you're working with as the white paint. So you'll actually be drawing with the blue, you will actually bring the white shapes at the white paint section parts out with the blue paint. So you'll be actually drawing these squiggly lines down so that you get the effect of the white still there. Hopefully that made sense. Um, if anyone is having any trouble, just send a message through. Hopefully we can get that answered. Can hear, we've got some hearing things going on. Sorry, I just, <laughs> that make a difference? Okay. <laughs> Let's fill in the lips. So see we got some of those lines coming through. We get some thumbs up. How are we doing? We all good? Thumbs on Instagram and some YouTube people. If you're watching, you're following along. Can you hear? Um, are you up to this point? So Annie, um, as we're at this point, would you mind just running through some of the steps that we've done before for anyone who might be a little bit behind, please? Yeah. Are people saying they're behind? Because I'm not hearing any reactions. No, oh, I'm we've got some on Instagram. I'm just checking in, just, just okay. in case. Okay. Oh, well, okay. So let me just hold the image. So firstly, um, while I let some of that dry, we marked out the way. The colour, the paint side of the colour, which is a red, white and blue. Let's get a nice light shade. And then we used that colour to mark out the way. So which this line, this line, we added Mount Fuji in and Banana Bear, obviously the boat was in yellow. And then we used the sky colour that we initially mixed to fill in the background. 
and then we're gonna add we added some white to get sort of blend in through there and then that's why mine's nearly right now and then we mixed up a light blue paint to get the basic shapes of the wave down and um, the paint and filled all of the bottom of the wave in first before we started adding the dark blue lines which is where we're at now is that okay yeah, all good. Okay. All right. Want to have a drink? Have a little break? Right. Someone wants to join our Instagram. <laughs> Should we do it? Yeah. Go live. So Salas underscore boxes. <laughs> I think it's trying to connect. I'm not sure. I've never done that before. All right. We'll continue and then if that doesn't happen. Okay. All right. Let's try it a little bit. I'm going to put a bit more of my blue on. Actually, I'm going to change brush a bit because I think I'm going to be there forever with some more brush. So most of this down here is actually dark blue. So let's get that worked on. I'm whacking some of that on there. It's not, it's not piddly little stripes. And neither is this bit here. So most of this is dark blue. It makes absolutely no sense right now. The painting here is a mess. So don't be freaking out. It's not finished yet. If yours is almost done, then congratulations. You actually don't need to follow me at my speed. If you are following me at my speed, don't worry if you're behind. And then we can, uh, we're going to mix up some light blue. And I'm going to bring back some of that. So much more white for this. Okay, let's get some out. So, Annie, just whilst we're at this point, can I ask a couple of questions about? So, if you find that your canvas is really wet for instance what would you advise on kind of pacing the painting so that it doesn't run and how to know what water to use when well um if you're at my stage and i know what what it bits are wet and stuff so here um i, put, I wanted to find lines a little bit more but it seems that the colors just sort of like blended in and become one color what i should have done was just let that area dry and then layer over another line. So like I probably put a dark line there, for instance, so it defines that area a little bit more. So acrylic paint dries quite fast, which is a plus side in using them. Um, if you're using watercolor, um, I would say work with a hairdryer. So if you've got a hairdryer handy, just give that a little blow, um, but be careful with how you want the water to spread and um, bleed out because if you've got quite a lot of water on the paint and the blobs of it can sort of spiral out so don't directly place your hair dryer over the top just hover it a little bit you know as if you wash drying your own hair you wouldn't like place the hair dryer directly on your scalp would you so there um if you're working with pencils and felt it pens you're pretty much dry <laughs> <laughs> to go. Did that answer your question, Gareth? <laughs> that did answer my question. Thank you. Um, that's right. Okay, right. So I'm just going to place some of these. I think I'm going to start adding the white on so that then I can define my darker points a bit more. But before I do that, I'm just going to get some of the dark paint and layer that on a little bit more there. There we go. So we've got some of that texture and there's got some of the white and the dark. It's got a little bit more dark there. See, um, see I, I've said it, I've said it already. I said, I'm gonna let that dry, but I just can't I need to 
Go over it. Okay. Oh, map to you, Jay. It's a lot darker than that as well. So I'm just going to add that little bit in. All right, right. I'm still going to stop playing with it. And now I'm just going to use my big brush and the mini brush. I think I'll use the big brush and then just see how it goes. So now's the sort of dun 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 part of the white areas. So we can get a proper actual feel for our waves. See how they all have stuff. Um, these little things here, these little spray marks, don't worry about those. Okay, what we're doing now is just the solid shapes. So these parts and most of that, just to get that down and we can fiddle with it <laughs> after. So I'm going to whack a fair bit of paint on my big brush. Yeah, use the, I'm, I've got one pot of water um, that I'm washing and tipping in. Water is your friend. So if your acrylic paint is being quite dry, placing it on, just pick dip, um, pick up your whatever your paintbrush that you're using, just tip it in. And then you could either use your palette or you can just blend it straight on the canvas. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one here. And I'm just going to go over that and that I did, just to give that the... And then it sweeps all the way down here. Okay, now if you're finding that it's blending in with your glue, that you just need to let it dry. So you can go over it, but continue. And then we've got that one up here. And you can begin to bring some of the white down in places. It, everything on the canvas at the moment is quite wet. So for me, it's not going to look as solid as the picture that I keep showing you. You know, we have all the time in the world live. I've let it dry, but people have stuff to do, don't they? Yes. <laughs> okay, and then there's some wet bits here. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to take my wave up, put a bit more. Okay, and then there's some white bits down here. Hopefully it's appearing through the camera a bit. I think it's... Hey, um, just before we move on to the next bit, would you mind just taking us through the last couple of steps, please? So um, before you moved on to the white, how did you finish like the crashing of the waves and then how did you mix the white and stuff like that? Well, I haven't finished the crashing of the waves yet, but literally before the white, which is everything that I've been placing on now, we, we were just doing a blue. So that's just using the, the dark blue paint and making those swoop lines following the contours of the wave and the way that it's flowing and crashing. Um, all it is is just a stroke in one direction or the other, you know, depending on which way your wave is going. You leave that over there. Um, yeah, as I say, this isn't appearing off as white as it should be because my blue is still wet. You know, if we had not, it's not white at all, you could just see. <laughs> Right, I'm just going to let that dry. I suppose it's worth saying at this point, we're running through this in, you know, 
45 minutes an hour but if you're following along at home feel free to go at a slower pace so Annie's showing you techniques that you can keep working long after we finish this broadcast so so don't feel don't feel rushed just go at your own pace and if you need to watch things back then obviously you can do that so so um yeah you got you got as long as you want for this painting yeah um, i mean i'm going um, at a pace of, like, as Gareth said, just so that we can get the basics done for you to then sort of do at a later time or then continue to finish after. The video will still be there. So my, my instructions will still be there no matter what page you're following. Um, but do ask questions, you know, if there's something that you're using or, you know, you're not sure of, we can get that answered for you. So hopefully you're not going to be left, you know, at a you know, what am I doing situation. So we started with white. I'm going to just switch to my medium brush. So I was doing that all with my big brush because I'm going to wash my brush out. And I'm going to pick some more of that white paint up. And I'm going to add some of that on to Mount Fuji. Again, you probably can't see that white, but it is, I promise you, it is. Um, and we can have some lines through there, I think. May have dried a little bit, so I can lay a, a bit more white onto that. So where are people uh, up to? Have, are they just starting, are you just starting the white bit? Have you done the, um, the white bits, just finishing the white bits. Give us an indication. Anywhere on Instagram or YouTube. I'm aware of the lighting getting a little bit dark in here as well. Okay. <laughs> you muted me, I can't believe it. <laughs> Yes, sorry, my finger slipped <laughs> and then I muted myself and then I muted you and then I unmuted myself. I'm not going to stop. Oh, bother. <laughs> oh, live TV, hey? It's quite stressful. <laughs> I don't know how people do it. <laughs> relaxing to pain. <laughs> yeah, it's relaxing from everybody else watching. <laughs> No, it really is relaxing. Um, so I'm picking up some of the dark paint now and I'm just defining some of these areas in the blue with some of this dark blue strokes um, to you know, get a little bit more depth into my painting. Hopefully you can see that there. I think it's worked. Um, you can, if you want to, take it a little bit darker by adding just the very tiniest amount of the black paint. I don't really advise it, um, just in case you do pull in a little bit too much than needed. But if you're confident enough, you can just pick up just a slight, tiny amount, then go for it. Um, for people using watercolor, I would advise to pick up the dark blue paint or the darkest blue that you have and just mix up a really really good amount of that uh, paint and don't water it down too much with the water and then just use that straight on so use it straight on don't dilute it too much with the water and you'll get a nice solid color a little bit as if you were using acrylics so I think we can define that a little bit. I think my my paint for the white is just a little bit too thick at the moment, and I think it's going to take a little longer to dry. But you can get a sense of where I place the wave, at least, and some of that. So while people sort of catch up with doing the white and maybe adding a little more defining strokes, I'm just going to explain the next part. Is everyone happy for me to do that? Move on. Yeah. Some thumbs, maybe.
People seem to be saying okay with the white and the dark bits. I suppose just would you mind just quickly running through those dark bits again? Because a couple of moments ago, some people were just finishing up the white, but otherwise, I, th I think we're all right. Okay, well, I'm going to paint Mount Fuji again a little bit darker, so that's that's fine. So you need to decide where you want a little bit more of your dark blue to give a bit more depth to the painting. So we've got a curve here, um, we've got all the curves here. And the curve is here as well. So it just finds the, the dot, the light, you find them a little bit more. So just going to do that there and up here. And I'm just going to paint a little bit, Mount Fuji, a little bit darker as well. Okay, right. We're going to do something wild and stick with the dark thing. If you're making a different wave colour as well, maybe stick with the colour you're using because we are doing the splashing. Splash, 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 splashy, splash. So all that is, is just C's. I'm just doing some C's and I'm doing them in just the C in those areas. So here, where the wave comes over, where the wave comes over and splashes around. So where you've added all of your white sections of those splashes, there's a few down here as well, but concentrate mostly on the top bit because a little bit more important just to you know, get that done um, and then you can place them you can place as many as you like really there's not a defining number but it just gives an impression that there's a wave coming over and crashing around and if you feel that you've done too much because you also need to go back and forth here to um your white paint to extend your way crashing out a little bit more. So you need to lather, say, the seeds, do the seeds in the blue paint and the white paint. And I need more white paint. So if you continue with that, I'm going to pick up my medium brush so don't worry about what i'm doing just for a second i'm going to try and define my white wave a little bit more because i feel like it's dried a little bit i can go over it so if your if yours is too blue as well you might want to leave it a little bit longer and then you can just go over it so we want to use the a small brush or a small brush of some size whatever materials you're using if you're using pencils, you might want to sharpen it really good just to get a nice defining point. And then you can add those C's over. Just to get those crashes and sense of the movement of the wave. And then you've got some down here. I'm gonna, not visible with my small brush, I'm afraid. So I'm just gonna use my medium brush, but you stick with your small brush to do this. It can take a little while. It's not a quick painting to do, um, but it's quite a nice one to sort of sit and focus on. The wave is in itself a nice picture. Yeah, it's a great picture, isn't it? I remember we did an event last year or the year before where we did um, the Great Wave and we were in uh, the Horn and at Hayes at London Bridge and someone turned the Great Wave into the Cookie Monster. And oh, it was yes. Great. That's, that's a good great. picture. <laughs> so that's awesome. We've had many characters show up and paint something different. We got We've had SpongeBob a few times, I think. SpongeBob. Yeah. Um, going back, um, how do you make those little splashes? What, what are your tips for, for the little splashes? 
Do you want okay. someone else? Do you have someone miss them? Or... Ah, yes, okay. Um, so the little splashes, all I did just to indicate was that they use your small brush and a little C, just a little C. And it's probably, they'll probably go that way. Some may go that way, just to give an indication. And you'll want to be using that with your white paint and the blue paint, the dark blue paint. And if you feel like you've got too much dark blue paint, then just put some more white on. You know, it's, it's your image and judge it by how many splashes you want. So it's just to define them. So you might want to say that, you know, dark blue paint is exactly as a shadow. So every dark blue you put on is a white, white splash as well. So, you know, just, the, oh gosh, there's another splash here. My paint is too wet, but the white paint is not going to take to it. But there is another splash here. As I say, the splash technique, this is the same for all the splash areas. So there's a little tiny thing for all this splash here and all the splash here. That's all the same for this image. If you have this image with you, you can't go wrong, you don't, then I pulled it up enough times <laughs> and I'll hold up again if you need to. And I suppose on that point, it's also worth saying if you want to see the painting again or you want it as a reference, all of our live events are up on popuppainting.com slash live and there's a high res version of the image there if you want to have a closer look there as well. Yeah. So now just really about, you know, just chilling, you know, topping up your wine and adding some splashes and those little details to your painting. Maybe if you've got a pop-up painting playlist on or just having a little jam, you know, a little dance to yourself in your room. How many people with pajama bottoms? Come on, give us a thumbs up if you have pajama bottoms. <laughs> Maybe I should do this in my pyjama next week. <laughs> Never had jeans on this late at night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So get, let's get some interaction while I'm doing this. Cause otherwise, as I keep saying, I said last time, my audience is actually a wall. <laughs> How's everyone doing that? Yeah, oh, we've got some pajama bottom wear over there on Instagram. That's great. <laughs> Hopefully you don't get paint on them. Yeah, if you're using acrylic paint, by the way, if you get it on you, you've got a new pair of trousers. Okay, it's probably highly unlikely you can't wash it off as soon as you do. If you do cover yourself in paint, <laughs> what I find really helpful, a nail brush and hot uh, hot water with washing up liquid and it should dry especially if it's acrylic it should dry like a plastic and so you should be able to just scrub it out with a nail brush trusty trusty nail brush or nail varnish remover yes very good solid advice there Gareth well done <laughs> <laughs> alternatively you can dye them completely a new colour to whatever paint colour you've got them <laughs> at an extreme level. So, got, well, this is not, clearly not the best image here of the wave, but there's a, a guidance of how to make it at least in a fun, different evening online. So, Annie, um, yeah. I'm just conscious. Hi, Laura. Laura's mentioned this. So our Instagram may time out uh, as we approach the hour mark. So I suppose now's a good time to start okay. thinking about what those final details are and, and stuff like that. Thank you, Laura. Very clever keeping us on time. Thank you. Okay, so if you're on Instagram and you're watching, as Laura said, it may time out. Um, the final details, little details still, just hold up the painting, um, is just, just make sure you define 
if your white paint is still picking up the blue with whatever you're using, just let it dry, uh, give it time to dry, get a hair dryer or something if you're a little bit impatient and just um, make sure that that area is dry and get some white paint again and a clean brush and go over your lines just so that they can become a little bit more solid and then you're good to go to just sort of um, add all these little splashy marks with the dark blue and the white paint again. If you're feeling very adventurous and you're not too precious about your surrounding areas, make sure your white mixture is very loose with some a lot of water into it. And just stand back and then just give a good nice little flick of the paintbrush and you'll get a nice sort of spray of paint going over it all. Um, and then there, if you really want to do some like four little blobs, four little blobs, there are some men on the boat as well. But that's really about it in terms of what's left. It's all about chilling and just adding the last few bits of splash marks just so that you're happy with it. And, and then, of course, adding your signature should you want to sign and sell these. So um, I suppose, Annie, um, if we time out on Instagram, just worth saying for people now, if we time out on Instagram before we're ready, we'll just reconnect and we'll go through those last steps on Instagram uh, with after reconnecting. So just a heads up for people if you're on Instagram and watching. Yeah. Um, I suppose there's not really much left for me to sort of guide you through in terms of my painting is not great obviously um, I'm limited with time in the sense of allowing my painting to dry so, so that white can appear through it's still quite um, thick so as the, uh, I, I'm aware that that's not quite clear in terms of it being white enough to see um, but so yeah we're coming to an end with the painting here, as I say, those little tips were again, if you're going to continue painting, feel free to, you know, do those little curls and those splashes, add those little men if you want to, or feel free to add something extra. If you want to go a little bit wild, maybe an alien um, or a cat, or maybe you want to add something surfing over the wave. It's completely up to you. Um, add your signature. As always, the most, well, uh, um, nice thing for us to see is if you could add pop-up painting um, and hashtag pop-up painting. If you put it in your stories, um, if you at us, then, then we're able to share it and we'd love to share it. So do at us. Um, if your account is private, it's a little bit tricky for us to share it, but I completely understand people's privacy reasons. But, um, it's just something that I'm pointing out because I noticed that last time we went live. Um, but that's okay. It's, it's, as long as you want to share with us, and we're happy to reshare if you want to. And um, yeah, that pop up painting, hashtag pop up painting. And um, yeah, let us see your creations from this evening. And um, no doubt they're going to be better than mine. <laughs> um, I'll just hold up the original in case people just want a little bit of a reference again. But thank you for joining us this evening. I um, hope you've had a wine glass in one hand, paintbrush in the other. And I think that is maybe it. If anyone has. Oh, someone's put their. Oh, someone's just washed their, <laughs> their paint glass, their paintbrush in their wine or their drink or whatever they're drinking. Yeah, no, don't worry. It's happened. Yeah, so, so just to reiterate what Annie said, thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening. Thank you for tuning in for uh, to Pop-Up Painting Live. Um, we've gone through the painting in just about an hour, but if you want to keep painting for the rest of the evening or whatever you want to do, absolutely go for it. And this video will be up on our Instagram story, hopefully, if we get it to work, and it will be up on YouTube for you to re-watch if you want. So feel free to tune in, repeat some of those steps. And as Annie said, um, we would love to see, oh, Annie, I think we timed out on Instagram. Yeah. Um, so um, we would love to see your uh, pictures uh, with uh, hashtag pop up painting live and tag us at pop up painting. And also, as we mentioned at the beginning, our art kits are now available on popuppainting.com slash live uh, to give you all of the stuff that we're going to be using. Um, so. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and I'm going to leave you with one last view of Annie and the canvas. I suppose, Annie, would you mind just running us through really quickly 
just like the basic structure of what we followed today, just as, as like a summary. Yeah. Right, so initially we painted, we mixed up the paint colour, which was a red, a white and a little bit of blue. And that gave us the basic colour to mark out the wave first. So we marked out this line and then this line and we put in Mount Fuji. The next thing we did was use the yellow straightener palette and we peeled in the boat. So that was there. And then we filled in the rest of the sky with the colours that mixed up initially. After that, because we had marked out the wave, we went in with a light blue wash everywhere. And then we came in with a dark blue. So then we marked out the second wave here and that pattern there with the dark blue. And we used the dark blue to give the sense of stripes and waves all the way through. So, and then we sort of doubled up the white uh, the light blue and some dark blue to define the areas a little bit more to give it a bit more depth. And then after that, what if you want to make sure it dries at that point is to um, get the white paint and then fill in all of these block areas. So you've got all this big wave up here and all here and all here and all here. And then you're good to go with the splash blocks of the white paint and the dark blue paint. And all that is is just like a little, little flick of letter C. And that's really about it. And you're just working back and forth with the, the splashes, with the white paint and the dark blue paint. And if you feel you need more lines coming through, then feel free to add that with the dark blue and the white paint down here as well. But um, as you can see from mine, you do need to give it that little bit of drying time because the white paint picked up the blue paint there. So it's, it's all right. I mean, the demonstration purposes is there for you to follow. It doesn't really matter what mine looks like. <laughs> That's my excuse anyway. <laughs> um, I think it was that okay, Gareth. Is everyone okay with that? Was that enough sort of like That's all right. Yeah, thank you so much, Franny, for taking us through that and doing uh, that last summary at the end. Um I think that brings us to a close. Carry on painting. Um, have a lovely evening, everyone. And I believe our next episode is this weekend. And uh, we are going to be doing a different painting this weekend. I'm just going to check for you. Um, and if you order your arts kit today um, from our website, um, you should be ready to join us next week uh, with, uh, with your new kit. So this Sunday at 4 p.m., we're going to be doing Monet's Irises, which is a lovely painting, lots of blues and yellows. Um, and then on the 14th of April, Tuesday the 14th, we're going to be doing a street art dove at 7 p.m. on Tuesday the 14th. So we look forward to painting with you in future and have a really lovely evening, everyone. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realise. Was I still on screen? <laughs> on screen, Annie. So, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>